Hi once again. Welcome to episode 808. 808. There's some, there's some sort of numerological thing. Numerolo numerolog <laughs> num <laughs> numerology thing about that, which I won't get into because I can't remember what it is. I know it's a master number or something, so whatever. This is episode 808. The topic today... <laughs> I'm straight on a tangent. The topic today is if, if you're not happy when you're single, you won't be happy in relationship. That may be very obvious to you, but if it isn't obvious to you, this will help you, help you understand why and what to do about it. Because frankly, it's time you got happy. And more besides that, but I'll get to that more in a moment. Before I jump into the topic fully, let me start by introducing myself in case you haven't seen my broadcast before and explain what this is all about. So hi, my name is Barry Selby. I am an inspirational speaker and relationship and love expert who helping women create balance in life, life and business. I'm also an author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for men and women, couples and singles that will change your life. I'm biased about that. <laughs> and being a passionate champion for the divine feminine informs my work with women, but also is what inspired these talks over two years ago, two and a half years ago now, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. So today we're at episode number 808. Yes, quite a few. And the topic today is very simple, really, which is if you're not happy being single, you won't be happy in a relationship. Now, I know some people are probably already thinking, that's not true, that's not true. When I'm in love, I'll be so happy, I'll be so happy. <sighs> I'm going to speak about that dreaded C word again in a moment. I'll get to that in a second. But here's the piece I want to speak to. Or actually, let me just put it on front. If you're waiting to be in a relationship to be happy, you're giving your new relationship partner the power of your happiness. I'll say that another way. Maybe. It may come out the same way. We'll try and see what happens. <laughs> if you're waiting to be in love, to be in an amazing relationship so you can feel happy, you're putting happiness on the um, assumption that the relationship will work. No, that's not quite what I mean. Let me try another way. That wasn't, that wasn't quite it. Let me have a redo on that one, please. <laughs> if, if you're waiting for your relationship, if you're waiting to be in a relationship to be happy and fulfilled, you're giving your power away to your relationship partner for your ability to be happy or not. That's pretty accurate. This is the dreaded C word, as I've mentioned before. C being codependency. Yes, that C word. And as I've spoken before many times, codependency for me is a blend of being a victim of somebody else's power, a puppet on somebody else's strings, and a way to disempower yourself. That's three options. There's plenty more to describe, but that's basically the ultimate thing. I'm not going to go into whole breakdown but I'll just simply use my usual reference point to talk about last week last weekend yes yeah, last Saturday about the Jerry Maguire quote you complete me that presumption of power um, um, what's the word looking for it'll come out to me giving away your power basically <laughs> I was trying to think another word your power disowning that's probably a better way of putting it Codependency is that. Codependency is early. Now, my parents had co were codependent in their relationship, uh, and much as they loved each other, there were certain things that were dysfunctional about codependency. So I, I've learned a lot from that, and also read some great books about it. One of which I recommend highly, which is by Gay and Katie Hendricks, called called um, Conscious Loving. That book's been out for thirty years at least. Game changing book about codependency. You want to read it to get to know this stuff. So. When you're in a codependent paradigm, and I'm going down a path, I'll come back to the other piece. What you're doing basically is being in a relationship where you don't have autonomy to choose for yourself what you want. You're actually at the behest of the other person. You know, you complete me. That mindset is one where you're letting the other person know they control whether you're whole or not. Not healthy. So this thing about happiness, to get back to the main topic, the main theme here is, is that if you're not willing to be happy on your own, then if that person doesn't treat you right, doesn't do everything you want, doesn't deliver everything you need, you're not going to be happy. Because I know, and some people think that when they're with somebody else, regardless of how they're treated, they'll be happy. It's a massive assumption. Let me put this clearly and succinctly and bluntly. Every positive feeling you want to have is inside of you. Let me add another piece to that. And just to make it really complicated, Every negative emotion that you don't want to feel is also inside of you. 
you have full spectrum, full range, full autonomy, full ability to express any emotion you feel or choose to feel based upon your own internal reference. You have the, um, let's say the rotary dial, the switch on the range of negative to positive to choose how you feel at any moment, every day, even now. You can choose to be happy for no reason. There's actually a quote out there somewhere about be happy for no reason. It's true. You don't need anybody else to be happy. But many people, maybe not you, but somebody you may know, who are caught up in this paradigm, this trap, this delusion, that it's going to be somebody else's job to make them feel happy. And I've been in relationships like that myself, so I know what it feels like to be in that place. And it wasn't pretty. It was fun at the time, but the price got paid pretty soon, sooner rather than later. And this is the thing. If you go into a relationship expecting the other person to make you happy, there's going to be a point fairly quickly where you discover that's not going to work. And then maybe you'll leave the relationship or you'll settle for less than you want, which many people do, and you'll put up with that for weeks, months, years. And then when you come out of the relationship, you do the whole thing again. This is a trap. This is a... Um, I keep using the word evacuation. It's not the word I'm looking for. This word's going to come back to me. I know it will. It's not. It's not. <laughs> it's sitting out there, but it'll come back to me. <laughs> this is um, definitely an. an um, uh, this word is so wrong on the tip of my tongue. It will come back. <laughs> and I'm driving myself crazy. Nobody else is doing this. I'm doing this. See my point about self? We have the power to do our own thing. Um, I've learned the lesson many times how happiness is a choice. I found myself being in joy sometimes for the silliest reason because I just made it so. I've made it to a point where I think some of the things are going absolutely sideways and I've been be okay with that. The lesson I keep coming back to is what happens in our world, what happens out there in experience and reality has no bearing on our internal state if we choose to make that the case. We can make the external references, the external experiences, the external things more important than our own emotional state so we can be affected by them. That's a choice. We don't have to be. And this is the thing. It's so easy sometimes when you're on your first date, second date with somebody to feel so euphoric and so happy and so amazing because you think they caused it. They didn't cause it. Let me be clear about that. They didn't cause it. You did. What happened was in their presence, you felt good. But the thing is, the key is that you felt good. They didn't make you feel good. You did. Yes, maybe their presence excited that space inside of you. Maybe that, their presence inspired you to feel good. Here's the thing. When they're not there, you can inspire yourself to feel good. It's an innate ability you have inside yourself to change your own inner state from negative to positive. You can do this anytime you want. There is a gift in this. And that gift is freedom. When you understand this paradigm where your emotional state is absolutely self-generated, that what happens out there is simply an opportunity to observe. This is the big one, by the way. This is the thing I've learned a lot over the years, is learning how to observe what's happening, to witness what's happening without judgment. It's a big one to learn. Once you learn this lesson, it makes life, it, basically, it gives you in, 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 in an unlimited freedom. Because when you're not caught up in the reactivity to things happening outside of you, then it no longer has effect on you. You become a witness, a neutral observer, an ability, a, a um, I don't want to say spectator necessarily, but by being able to see and observe what's happening, you get to respond as you choose to versus responding as they're wanting, sorry, versus reacting, not responding, reacting based on what's happening out there. Again, when you react to things outside of you, you're giving a your power away, becoming a victim again, because you're being triggered by what happens, and that means whatever they do, they being whatever that is out there, then has control over your freedom. You don't really want that, do you? You want your freedom back. This is a key, a massive key to getting your freedom back. It's taking back dominion of your own internal state. So being happy on your own, being happy when you're single, is an indicator of that. It's a piece of the puzzle. That when you learn how to be happy on your own as a single person, you'll actually be much more free as and when you choose to be in a relationship. And by the way, one of the side effects, when you're happy on your own, you become more attractive. What a concept. So being happy on your own is a powerful place to be. Same as as I talked about in my other courses, learning how to love yourself first. You're not waiting for somebody else to love you to feel okay. Same thing applies. Being happy on your own versus being happy in a relationship. Being loving on your own before you're in a relationship with somebody else. Loving yourself is a practice that will help you become more, one, become more attractive in relationship, be more effective in relationship, 
and also be less codependent in a relationship. That's a triple. Those are good. So my subtle reminder <laughs> here is to take your power back and to do it by simply being okay with who you are when you're single. Loving yourself, being happy, being free, coming to terms with your amazing abilities to be yourself so that when you're in a relationship, you get to add to that. You're not replacing anything you think you're missing because there's nothing missing. It's just an illusion you may be carrying. This is a big teaching, I know, maybe for some people. For some people, it's like, oh, this is great. I love this stuff. My, my key here is simple, in a sense. Now, <laughs> let me say it this way. Um, I've been on this path a long time. I've learned a lot of things over the years that I'm teaching, obviously, through these talks and through my coaching, that being happy, even when things don't go the way you want, isn't necessarily a skill you can learn overnight. I have had to, I've had learned lots of lessons over the years. Lots of teachings, lots of trauma, lots of challenges, lots of opportunities, and lots of growth that allows me to become to a place where I am now. So I'm not saying what I'm teaching is a second a moment, in a moment in time switch that just changes everything over. But I know it is. It just took me a long time to learn it. I'm hoping you learn it faster than I did. So I'm giving you this advice now to save you time. And you're very welcome. Um, <laughs> so my, my invitation to you, my encouragement to you, and my recommendation to you is take dominion over your happiness. Especially if you're single. You can do this when you're in a relationship too because you can take time to be with yourself. But when you're really in a place where you do honor, respect, love yourself and, and happy with yourself when you're single makes you more, much more effective as a relationship partner and much less needy to have a relationship for you because that's the trap of codependency as I mentioned. So I hope this makes sense to you. Hi, Muna. Nice to see you. Thanks for being in my broadcast. So this is kind of the distillation of some of the teaching I do in my coaching. So again, as a reminder, all of these emotional states I've talked about, all of these emotional expressions that you have are inside of you. Nothing to do with anybody else. They're not tied to anybody else and they're not dependent upon anybody else. This is all inside of you. You get to choose though, if you want to live that way or live in a codependent state that makes somebody else responsible for your feelings. I recommend the former, not the latter, in case you hadn't figured that out already. So I'm going to recommend a couple of things that I invite you to check out. One of them is my self-love practice. I mentioned that because it's important to recognize that love doesn't start out there. It starts inside here. And when you're single, it's probably the best time to practice it. So however you, if you have a self-love practice already, go for it. Keep doing it. Maintain it. Make it daily. Practice it so when you're in a relationship, then you're already in that vibrational space that becomes attractive to your new partner. But don't give it up when you're in there, by the way. Keep it going. If you don't have a practice, I recommend my, my own self-love guided meditation practice that I've offered for several times. It's going to be on my site. The link will be in the comments that will give you guidance both with audio and written forms to help you learn how to love yourself as a daily practice. Easy, effective, powerful. Secondly, I'll put a link in the comments to have a complimentary clarity conversation with me. That triple C again. I got it out that time. A complimentary clarity conversation with me. If you're stuck on this, if you want to find some movement to change how your relationship with yourself is so you can become more attractive to a relationship, so you can actually heal the wounds of the past and become whole, so then you can be an effective and successful relationship partner. How's that for a deal? So I'll put the link in the comments for that so you can check it out and have a look if that fits for you. And thirdly, because I did mention it in the beginning, my book will be in the top comments too. I think there's a chapter about this in my book too. There's something about that in my book, I know. There's 50 principles, so one of them might apply to this. Um, I do invite your questions and thoughts about this because this is a topic for some people that doesn't make any sense. And for some people, it's challenging. So if you have any thoughts, questions, comments about this, please put them below. I will respond when I sign off. If you want to share it with somebody who this is an issue for, please do that gently. Do let them know this is my perspective and maybe not yours, so they can actually take it out on me, not on you. Um, <laughs> just to excuse you from the upset that might come back your way, because you might be judging you, thinking, what do you mean I'm not happy? Some people react that, that, that way. Anyway, that's down another path. Um, I will let you know where you can find my broadcast because if you haven't seen my broadcast before, why haven't you been watching? Um, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page, so I invite you to come back and watch. That's at Barry Selby on Facebook, and you find me there. If you want to make sure you're notified, somewhere around this video should be a um, three dots you can click on for more information, and there should be a button in there or a click in there that shows you how to be noti to notify when I go live. That will give you the notification. 
Um, secondly, the replays for my broadcast go to my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author on Facebook. Please like my page. Also on my YouTube channel, where I put backups, you can go to my business, my uh, YouTube channel, which is also Barry Selby, on my social media is that. And on there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. Please subscribe to my channel, by the way. Um, that's where you find the replays. This will be there shortly. The links will be in the comments. As soon as I get signed off, I'll add them to the comments so you can find them. Um, don't waste time. Find the ways to make yourself happy internally. Not by when I say what you do, but how you feel. And realize that you don't, um, that was the word, vacate your self-responsibility. Finally, the word showed up. <laughs> it was in there all the time. If, if you're just catching, the replay, catching it now, go back and watch the beginning. I, I did get caught up on a couple of words, and one of them was vacating your responsibility, vacating your power, vacating your authority. This is about claiming, remembering, and taking back your authority. And this is one way of doing it, is loving yourself and being happy with who you are, because you are that already. This is just my reminder. I think I made my point again. This is my reminder every day about loving yourself, being the best person you can be for yourself so you can be a better person in your relationships. This is the work I do. This is my passion, my journey, my calling, and I hope you get some value from this. I do this every day on Facebook, as I mentioned. I give you all the replays. I've got the links in the comments coming up as soon as I sign off. If you're watching the replay, this should be already up there. If you're watching it live, hang on a second. I'll get you those to you shortly. Um, and that's about it. I thank you for watching as always. I invite you to take care of yourself as always because you deserve the best and taking care of yourself is the best way to get there. With that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care.